Oh, well, see, a lot of people actually enjoy races like this because they like to see the wrecks. And the good thing about it is this is virtual, so nobody's got to pay for any yeah, of the yeah, damages yeah. that are done. <laughs> yeah. We're going back here and watching the replay here so y'all folks can see why the caution came out real quick. Definitely want to show it to you here. You see right there. See Darren Clemens just drove in the inside right there, Michael Mueller, and then just was chaos pile up from there. But the calls were first caution right there, just to let everybody see. We're live here tonight, simspeedshop.com Xfinity Series. And a good one. And um, I, I'm going to be honest with you, maybe I'm about as nervous as these guys are out here on the track because the last couple weeks it's just been one thing after another for me here. <clears throat> Maybe I'm just getting old. Joe, I hope you're not using that app, uh, face <laughs> app. I don't know if we could say that. I don't know if that's copyright or oh, something. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But I'll say, yeah, yeah. They, they'll send us to Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh. Well, we do appreciate everybody tuning in. And we're, you know, we're live here tonight, though, at uh, Indianapolis here for the, you know, simspeedshop.com Xfinity Series. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, glad I caught that before half the race was through. I actually looked on my phone and was like, all right, let me go ahead and check, see where we're at. You know, I didn't see it. I'm like, what in the world's going on? So, but under caution for the first time here tonight. Wow. This place here, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Tim messing with me from beyond. No doubt. Yeah. Tim's playing, <laughs> playing jokes on me, man. That's what it is. He's, He's voodooing my, my, my setup for me there, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> He's messing with yeah. you, Joe. He's like, I'll teach you, man. <laughs> hey, he's throwing his uh, whole famous Kool-Aid down here. I must have got into it. That's what it was. <laughs> so, I tell you, but Indy, man, just like that right there. Uh, I, well, I said it before the race started. That you can get in trouble real quick. So we're going to see what the restart brings here. Remember, everybody got single file like we thought they would. Very good start there. Just two guys taking up the same real estate. Base cars in. Going back green here. Try this again here at Indy. Themspeedshop.com tonight. Man out front, Alan J. Elwood. He gets another good, great start as we're back green. Yeah, that's the second great restart of the night. Most of these cars are going to really run and try to single file here. That's exactly what they're doing. They will. You're going to see them try to battle. This time, man, up front, the number 11, Will Davis, is going to try to take that spot when he does in second. Mike Romanger is going to fall back into third. The battle's on for there for Blake, Blake Griffin and Justin Gaines as they're looking. Here comes the seven of Ed Morris. That guy's been on a tear himself the last couple weeks. Let's keep our eye on him also. Yeah, Ed showed us that he's got some speed. He, it almost looks like he doesn't maybe qualify the best, but uh, late on in the race, he does seem to show his presence and show that he can run up front. And so far, looking good. Just got to be patient. Right now, he's looking in front of him. Two cars are battling it out side by side. Blake Griffin right there along with Justin. They're going to duke it out. To go behind him, you got Nick Hunt, man, the past series champion here in the Xfinity Series. He's got a good little battle going on there. It looks like with Jerry Glenn. So far, everybody's kind of taking it pacing a little bit more side-by-side -side racing as they head off into one this time, or out of four. Yeah, back there in about uh, 13th, 12th, 13th place, they're it's doubled up going around the corner, so. Absolutely. Well, I don't know much about tomorrow night, but I know about tonight right now, the Xfinity Series here, and everybody right now in Indianapolis they're going single file. That is the, the cue that they want to get to. Single file. Not saying the double file won't work here. I'm probably going to see a couple guys been trying to get up there and pass. We've already seen how quick it is to get into trouble. And this guy right here started way back in the back. We call him the captain, John T. Wimbish right here. For some reason, I don't know if he, hey, he didn't get his qualifying in on time or something was way, way off. But he's up the 14th, so he's moving on up through the field right now. Yeah, it looks like something might have been off of this car. Maybe he had a, a virtual issue. He started eighth position, Joe. 
That's what I'm saying. Then fell back for some reason. Don't know if he had to make a pit stop. Don't know if he had to do something. But he was way back before that caution came out. So actually, that caution probably benefited him uh, tremendously a lot here because it's got him back on pace up to 12th place right now. He's coming to the front. Obviously, don't count him out. He's still got time to get it done. I mean, you know, we got you know a few more few laps here left. You see these cars rumble, man, out of the turn. We talk about turn four, Nick. We, we mentioned it before the race here. Turn four. You come out of that turn, you got to have all sorts of momentum. If not, what we're seeing right here with John, as soon as you hit the turn one, boom, there you go. He's going to make that pass on you. Yeah, and I'd almost be scared to be the guy on the outside because uh, that wall does come up quick, especially if someone's pushing under you. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. Right now, still single file. Line, everybody's being patient out front. Alan J. Elwood, though, the man in charge, he has dominated a lot of these races. The problem is he's not been able to finish a lot of the races. And, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from the skill set of him. Alan definitely is fast, and he knows what he's doing. Mishaps, Agreed. though. Will Davis, though, looking very strong here tonight, along with Mike Romanger, who definitely, Mike is one of those who sits back a lot. But tonight, looks like he's got a little bit more of an aggressive side to him. Yeah, you know, and as, uh, as we're quite a few races in here to the season, I, I'm not exactly sure on how many races we are exactly, but, uh, you know, some of these guys are starting to think, hey, i got to start making my point push, because if not, I might not have a shot at the chase this year. Oh, believe it or not, we're about halfway through the regular season. Remember, there's a five-race chase, so... You hit the nail on the head right now as Mike Romanger looks to the inside trying for that pass. But you did hit it right there, Nick. Guys now need to start worrying about, especially sitting back on the bubble, can I make that chase? It's only a five-race chase. Anything can happen in five races. When they put that together and when it starts, you almost have to be picture perfect from race one to race five. You can mess up maybe the first or two, but after that, you better be dead on. And, and, and definitely have everything going. Yeah, as uh, back here in the fifth position right now, Ed Morris is going to take it two wide down in one and two, try to get another position for fifth. And he's trying on the inside. He's battling right now with the man on the outside right there in the 30 there, Justin Gain. As Gain, man, gives that position up right behind him, Nick Hunt. He's trying to trail in the tracks there, maybe trying to catch up through to Ed Morris. He's got his own battle going on with Dalton Cowden back there. Don't count him out. And John T. Wimmers, I'm telling you, that man, he is piling in that ship slowly but surely to the front. Again, want to be patient. Don't want to dent the fenders on it. No, you do not, because like we said earlier, aerodynamics could affect you. So maybe he's thinking, I don't want to hurt this racecraft until I need to make a strong push. Absolutely. Here is everybody storming on down for the front stretch. Good race pace so far amongst all these guys here tonight. I'm sitting here at Indianapolis. Right, the Indy here tonight for the uh, SimSpeedShop.com Xfinity Series here for Extreme Motorsports 99.com. Appreciate everybody tuning in because it's a good race here. And we've had an exciting series so far of races with these guys. Uh, everything has been very exciting, but I'm telling you what, you talk about Ed Morris. That man's on a, on a tear right now, and he's looking to try to take that fourth-place spot from Blake Griffin. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's on him. He's real close to his bumper. He's just, I think he's trying to size him up, maybe get a little feel for him here before he makes his actual pass. Very hard to pass here in the turns. There is some passing places, you know, we talk about it, especially coming out of turn four. You keep the momentum, and the guy in front of you slips up just a little bit. You get that momentum coming down the straightaway and maybe, you know, kind of slingshot by him going into turn number one and obviously get that position. Yeah, and, you know, that could be a late, uh, a late game thing to, to re remember as well because uh, late in the race here, if – they're battling for the lead, and somebody makes a mistake on the outside, and the momentum from second place, they could have it at the line. Absolutely, they can, and that is what is probably going to happen. He's coming down the bad stretch here. Looks like he got the momentum out of turn number two. Ed Morris is going to take fifth place spot. Blake Griffin is going to fall back to fifth right there as Nick Hunt falls up to six. He got the spot away from Justin Gain. Dalton Cowden, and oh, we were just talking about John T. Wimbus. He had a slip up right there. Let's go back on the replay here real quick. As Michael, actually, Michael Thwaite and uh, Brandon Ketchum back there. 
But you just saw John T. Wimbus a little bit all out, out of shape. And then he lost that spot, fell back to 12th right now. You know, that might not hurt him too bad as well, John. I mean, he did get pushed back quite a bit after all that hard charge he had to do again. But uh, he does got the speed, so he might be able to put it back up there. Patience is a big thing. We talk about that week in and week out. And these guys have got to have the patience and, and the wherewithal to know what's going on on the track. Definitely, you want to be just, you know, keen on what's going on. And right now, you see John trying to do that. Michael right there took that spot behind him. Corbin, uh... I'll say it's Corbin Balk. Hope that's how you say his last name there. He's up underneath him. So right now, John T. might have used up a little bit of tires. That's something that these guys, you know, we haven't talked much about here, Nick. But we'll get into that if a long green flag goes. This place is hard on tires. Yeah, it's hard on the tires. And believe it or not, Joe, I think it would be hard on your fuel as well because, you know, you are running wide open down the back stretch. So how long can these guys go on fuel, Joe? I, well, we got Alan out there. He'll probably let me know. <laughs> I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to take an educated guess here and say 25, maybe 30 laps. I, I, you know, this is a two-and-a-half-mile track. It's not like a Talladega or Daytona where they are wide open constantly or most of the, you know, most of the time uh, here you are off the throttle going into the turns into the little short shoot right and whatnot so you are giving that car a little bit of break so you might be able to go a little bit longer than what i'm saying but I, i'm gonna say 25 30. i was thinking roughly about the same thing joe i was thinking 25 30 maybe 35. you know i i'm not a crew chief so <laughs> sure. uh, me either I, I tell you that is Let's go back here in the field here. Tyler Holman hanging out in 19th place spot right there, looking pretty good. And in front of him, Mike Franklin and company there with Adam Eisenhower and Gary May. They thought about three wide in the turn. We talked about that before the race. Not something you want to do because that is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, they pushed three wide for a quick second. And, uh, ooh, it, that could have got very bad very quick. And luckily they all held their line and, and come out of the corner straight because – that could have got very dangerous. Oh, absolutely. Definitely right there. Adam Eisenhower. You don't want to get stuck on the outside too much. And oh, and he turned. They got together. The 82's around in the wall. Mike Franklin. Right there. Almost kind of the identical situation between Darren Clements and company earlier on. Those two were battling. You see Mike Franklin down low. Looks like he pushed, but right there, Adam Eisenhower just caught the rear just a, ever so slightly. Two guys battling for position. Mike Franklin up into the wall. Caution's out here for the second time in Indy. Yeah, and it looked like they just barely caught each other. And that's what will happen. You get put into the outside wall, and, uh, and once you're hmm. spinning, you're gone. Absolutely, I tell you what. And you're right, that is definitely something. Well, man, we're under caution here. Definitely, we'll get a talk with somebody. And I'm kind of curious, you know, to, to get an insight here. Darren Clements, earlier on, uh, racing hard. Got a little contact, get a word in with him, see how he's going to bounce back. Darren, you're in the booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you what, earlier on, a little bit of race contact there earlier on. You was racing and battling hard up front there, you know, whatnot. Just caution came out early. But how's the car feeling? How are you going to bounce back from that? Maybe get back up front here later on. Well, the car is feeling all right. Uh, I think I'm going to really have to play some different fuel strategy than these guys up front. Uh, looking for that long green run where I can actually get that to happen and work out for me. I'll tell you what, uh, I don't want to mess up your pit stop here, but man, looking good. You know, you got a fast machine. You showed that earlier on. You got a lot of time. Good luck out there, Darren. Thank you, Joe. All right. Get him back down there, and he is. You're in pro performance, wasn't you? Yep. All right, good deal. Pro performance right there, Motorsports on. Darren Clements, and, uh, you know, you could you could kind of tell a little bit disappointed in the voice, uh, but he knows he's got time to get back. Yeah, and as long as you, as long as he's got that mindset that he's got of you know, 
as long as I get a green flag run and I get some strategy playing, I, I still got a shot at this thing. And that's all you need is a good positive attitude and you can still come out on top. You know, you said something right there I haven't really, really probably ever said. You know, I've always talked about patience. I've always talked about racecraft. I've always talked about speed and, and, and what you have to do with a car. But uh, keeping your head clean, man, out there and, and, and getting back up there knowing that you've got something fast. I mean, that, that that's really is true what you said right there. You, you've just got to keep yourself in, in tow and understand the situation you're in. Yeah, because, you know, mind games, they can play quite a bit on you. If you if you think, man, I, I got turned, I'm not going to do good, you know, that gets in your mind, you get flowing, and you get thinking too much about it, and then you're not focused on what's in front of you. And, uh, you know, he's got a great mindset of, hey, I've got something for him. Uh, as long as I get my strategy right, I, you know, I think I could probably put it up there. That's that's what I'm looking for in a driver, and, and, you know, that shows great character of him as well to say, hey, I still got something. There you go, definitely. And, and definitely just get you know caught up in a little bit earlier on mishap hey but we'll be able to bounce back here still under caution out front alan j elwood leading this one right now now i'm gonna tell you what hey i'm gonna say it we're missing somebody in the crowd here tonight the man that's been on the hot 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 seat and definitely been hot red hot the last couple weeks Nick Cohan, I don't see him out here. Actually, you just brought up a good, good thing because I don't see him either, Joe. So, yeah. Hopefully, huh. everything's okay on his end. I mean, obviously, we know you know real life stuff comes first, and you know things and whatnot. So, hopefully, everything's you know positively good on that that end. But yeah, I, I'll just go ahead and shout it out. He has won the last two, and folks, I mean, he he you know his season didn't start out the best. And he'll be the first to admit it, like, man, I don't know what in the world. But he has won the last two. So he has proved he is definitely fast. Alan J. Elwood has been a man that's been fast. Ed Morris has been a man that has been fast. Mike Rollmanger, and, and Nick, I know you know, you're new to kind of up here in the booth, you're new to the to the league, but I've known Mike for a while now and I've watched him. He, he's obviously the defending series champion here in the, in the Xfinity series, so he's trying to look to defend that title again. But he is one of those drivers. I call him Mr. Extreme because he's one of the originals here at Extreme, one of the real originals uh, back when they first started. And he is a multiple-time champion, so you can't ever count him out. It's just his driving style is not the most aggressive and he, he kind of looks, and it's different than what a lot of these other guys' driving styles are. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I've heard quite a bit about him just talking to some other drivers I've talked to here and there, and he is a defending champ, so obviously he knows how to put it up front, knows how to win a series, so you got to give the man his respect because he is your series champion from last season. Absolutely, no doubt about it. As right now, Alan Jay is going to lead this hot field here at Indianapolis with the SimSpeedShop.com Xfinity Series here tonight of Extreme. And boy, I tell you what, Extreme brings on some great racing week in and week out here. And we're happy to bring it here at OSR Network, online SimRacingNetwork.com. Hit a like, hit a share, hit a, hit a, hit hit everything out there that you possibly can. Just don't hit your monitor or your computer. We don't want you to be able to break that. We want you to be able to watch these awesome races <laughs> and these awesome guys. I tell you, it is definitely different and exciting to see. But uh, check us out on YouTube, man, at OSR Network, Facebook at OSR Network. Check out ExtremeMotorsports99.com. Uh, they've got a whole series full of racing throughout the week for you. As we're getting set to go back green here tonight, Indianapolis. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this uh, restart's going to play out because Ed Morris is now on the front row, and uh, he's shown he's got some speed starting back there in 13th position. So I'm interested to see if these guys go single file or can Ed kind of stay side by side with them. And, you know, you just said it right there. Will these guys be able to stay side by side? Will they do what they need to do? Or, you know, Mike Romanger and Blake Griffin, Chuck Sweetie, and all them guys back there sitting maybe about licking their chomps up going, hey, you two are aggressive. Get up there, take each other out. We will be more than happy to take the lead from you or just go root right on by you as pace cars pulling this field out of turn number four. We're getting set to go back green flag racing here, Indianapolis style tonight. 
Yeah, this, they're going to come around this last turn here, going to come to green. They're they're all going to be looking to keep this car straight, get single file. Maybe Ed Morris will keep it side by side, though. We'll see here. We'll have to see. Alan Jay has got some awesome great starts because obviously he has the benefit of being the leader on the start. Pace cars in, getting set to go green. Here we go. Green flag flies, and these boys, man, rumble to the line as they come across it here at Indy. Once again, Allen with a great start down there in a one and two. Is, uh, as that just couldn't look like he didn't get on as hard as he maybe wanted to. Yeah, that's just that's as Allen Jail would having that benefit of being out front. But Allen, but Ed Morris right there is not going to give up. Mike Romanger though, man, on a trail right there in his tire tracks trying to run him down. Got a little bit of damage. Well, I have to see. Yeah, I'll have to see how he fits up here, but uh, Chuck Sweeting is in the fifth position, started uh, position 29th. Uh, Blake Griffin started 20th, so them guys are from back in the pack coming up front to try to give these guys a run up front. Got to look back here about eight, eighth and ninth place spot along with John T. Wimmis behind him. You got Jerry uh, Glenn, Corbin back there. They're all kind of two by two coming out of turn four down the uh, front stretch here everybody gets single file that's the name of the game you want to get single file as quick as you possibly can you don't want to lose momentum to the front guys another guy keep your eye on we talked about it he got caught up in a huge mess earlier on tommy haynes he's up to 20th along with darren clements just talked to him he's up to 19th so these guys right now are battling it out trying to bring the trying to kind of um uh, what's the word i'm looking for uh put together some pieces to a bad race here tonight yeah, with the mindset that they, he's got, uh, Mr. Mr. Darren here, if he just keeps on charging, keeps his mindset straight, I think he will be a top contender for tonight. And so far, so good, looking good. Right now, he's in 18th, just picking them up, putting them down one by one. David Elliott's right there in front of him. Michael Thwaites up to 10th. Corbin there in 11th. Jacob Bell to 12th. Jerry Glenn in the 13th. And Adam Eisenhower in the 14th. That's simspeedshop.com's own. So something we have to keep our eye on. Can Darren and Tommy Haynes bounce back from disaster earlier on in this race right now? Mike Franklin back in the back, though. Remember, he got caught up in the mix earlier on. He's back to 28th. He's trying to make his way to the front. Yeah, they're all going to try to see if they can push up here. But uh, they've got quite a few cars in front of them still that get up there. But, uh, you know, they've got a lot of time with this two-and-a-half-mile track, though. Well, and I tell you, Alan J. Elwood better look in his rearview mirror. We talked about Mike Romager being very, very set back and relaxed, but tonight he's got full blown a hammer down because he's coming for Alan J. Elwood. He's got a fast hot rod out there, too, to try to get it done as they storm off down the front stretch here. He's trying to run down the leader. He got past Ed Morris, and he's pulling away. So the top two guys definitely are making some waves here in Indy. Yeah, and if you look at the times here, Joe, I'm, the time sheet's kind of messed up. They are almost two, almost three tenths, uh, two and a half tenths faster than the third place man of Ed Moore. So they have found some speed, Allen and Mike has. And right now, if they could keep this pace up, they could walk away on a long green flag run. They could walk away from the field very easily. Yes, Joe, and as I got my time sheet up working now, yeah, they are. They're they a little bit quicker than the rest of the field. As you looking through the times, nobody's really on a 51 pace like they are. Absolutely not. I mean, they are right there knocking on the door, the 51. They're 52. That time they slowed down just a little bit, a 52, 5, and a 6, respectively. Ed Morris about the same with them. So time before, those guys, man, were putting up some hard, hard, fast laps out there. Look at eighth place, man, John T. Wimbus along with Will Davis right there. So John slowly but surely trying to climb and claw his way back to the front here. He had himself in a hole earlier on, but he is definitely, man, climbing out of it right now. That's always good to see, Joey. You accidentally have a little mistake, and you can recover from it. It's not too late in the race for him to come back up front, give them guys a shot, and claw back at the, the lead that the leader's got on them. And uh, it's always good to see somebody battle back after their own mistake. Absolutely, it is right there. He's looking good. He's up to eighth place spot. So, so far, so good along with all these guys. Got a good top ten right now. Alan Jay's out front. Mike Romanger sitting in second. Ed Morris up to third. Blake Griffin there in fourth. Chuck Sweeting to fifth. Will Davis to sixth. Nick Hunt up to seventh. 
John T. Wimmis in the eighth, Michael Thwaites the ninth, and Corbin Balk right there in the tenth place spot. Now, I tell you, you got a lot of guys on the outside of tenth place here out of the top ten looking to try to knock themselves in that top ten with some fast drivers, and most notably Darren Clements and Tommy Haynes. They're, they're trying to slowly but surely move themselves up to the front. Yeah, I think the last time we were on them, they were they were just at like 20th position. They're up to 17th now, I believe, right? They so, are. Uh, they are moving. Moving on up there, and I tell you, that's 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 what they want. I mean, that's what they need is a good run to bounce back. Again, points is what we're talking about. You mentioned it earlier, Nick. We're we're closing in. We're like halfway through the regular part of the season, which is a 10 race regular season and a five race chase. So that, that's what these guys have to look at. A lot of these guys want to get locked in. Right now, Darren Clements is going to go door to door with the 13 machine of Gary Sexton right there. Almost contact again between them as they pushed up and shoved each other out of the way. He's going to take the spot away from him. Gary's going to lose two spots due, uh, you know, by that little bit of contact and momentum right there. Caution's out. Yeah, as we got a caution on the field, Joe, I'm not too sure where that was at. Not 100% sure, but we'll, we'll definitely go back here and try to find what we're, what we're looking at here. Oh, right there, Bryce Sinisak destroying that car. Let's go back and see what happened to Bryce here as he was back in the back running. Looks like the car just pushed up the track, got into the wall a little bit, and when it did, it bounced off the wall. Yellow contact with the your black machine there and just send him straight into the wall and his night is done unfortunately Bryce Sinisak out of this one here tonight yeah and, and you know Joe that's just kind of a an accident that happens you know you push up to the wall like I said earlier and uh you know the outside wall comes quick oh yeah no doubt about it well tell you what let's uh again we got some definitely some uh, long green, you know, long cautions here, so we're able to <laughs> get in some talking here. Bring up Mike Franklin here and see what he's got. Mike, Joe, in the booth, got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy. Man, I tell you what, well, you know, a little bit of the hard racing earlier on got caught up in a little mishap there earlier in the race, but I see that you still got a fast machine, you got time. What's your game plan to bring it back to the front? I just got to attack this. Uh Illinois Construction Chevrolet and just uh, just try to take it one one quarter time and just uh, kind of take my tires and just see what I can do with it to it uh, how far I can climb. Hey, well, I'll tell you what, man, you're looking good. You know you got a fast ride up underneath you. Keep it clean and good luck out there, Mike. All right, thank you, Joe. All righty, tell you what, right there, put him back there. He's in a performance motorsports right there. Good heavy hitter team. We got John T in there with Tommy Haynes there. Unfortunately. You know, Tommy got messed up a little bit. Mike got messed up earlier on in here. And Nick Hunt's one of their main men for points-wise in the the uh, team-style championship run here for Xfinity. Uh, we'll get more into that as the season goes on. But uh, I definitely want to get a word in with this guy. I want to make sure he gets through his pit stop. Don't want to mess him up. Do not want and to mess anybody up on and, that. And, and hopefully... He sees that he's in the staging room, so when we bring him up, he's not out here yelling at the, <laughs> at the computer. <laughs> Hopefully his pit crew does right for him this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like they did. They got him out, got him out clean. He took four tires and fuel. He looks like he's going to have a, a very, very good pit stop of 13.9. It's going to be able to bring him back out front. Let's bring up Alan J. Elwood and see what he's got. Alan J., Joe White in the booth, got a copy? I have you loud and clear, Joe. Man, I tell you what, again, you've got a rocket ship out here, but, you know, you've had it all season. It's just those small things. you got to put them all together and be there at the end. But can the night be the night? You think you got the car to do it? I think I got the car to do it, but can I lay a stat on you that maybe you don't have? Ah, go ahead. Heck yeah. We'd love it. All right, so we've ran four races. I've finished fourth in one of them the other three races i have finished in 20th 
Uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, if that ain't consistency, I don't know what is. Uh, well, but I tell you, it, it, consistently in the back, but I mean, <laughs> but you know what? That does not represent how well you have been doing this season, and and and, and again, the finishes might not be there, but you definitely have been up front strong in all those races. Have led a lot of laps definitely been a contention and you're one to be feared when you come out here on the track it's just uh you know i, I think you've got that you go hard or go home sometimes yeah it's true uh this season has has you know like you said we've shown we have speed this whole team really does have speed um last week i know that you know the broadcast wasn't there and, and that sucks we you know we missed you joe um but last week, I mean, it was a testament to just, you know, we had some bad luck fall our way as a team. I think all of us were probably in the top four at one point. Uh, and just, you know, each one of us kept getting picked off by something that was kind of out of our control. So, you know, you, you try and stay up front. But like Gary tonight, getting caught up in a wreck on, I think, lap two. Um, you know, especially in a place like this with tight corners. It, it's hard to stay out of trouble. And, and uh, I guess, you know, as long as I'm up here, I, I'm in the best spot. <laughs> Hey, absolutely. Definitely out front. Hey, you clean air, looking good. Good luck out there, Alan, man. Thank you, Joe. All right. And back down there in his team. You know, awesome. Joe, and, and, What's that? and most people would say that, uh, you know, Alan, he's, he's got his respect. He's been up front, been charging hard. He's got speed, and it's hard to pass him. So everybody that's behind him right now has to give him respect because of that. Absolutely, and that's the thing. And you know, and he he admitted to himself. He got caught up into other things. He's gotten caught up in the things on track. Some things you can't control. Some things that you can. It's racing. A lot of times you get out here. No matter if you've got the blazing fast car that's just obliterating the track, or the slowest car, some things things happen. I mean, you mess up on on yourself. I've ca I've caught up mental mistakes a lot of times. There, Nick. You know. Uh, it, it can happen. I mean, you know, hit a wall, you know, misjudge the turn, pit stop things. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. And then, obviously, somebody wrecks in front of you, and you can't avoid it. Yeah, you know, accidents happen. And, you know, it, he sounds like he's got the mental game on himself as well that, you know, hey, I, it accidents happen. At least he's saying, hey, I am consistent. I finished fourth one race, 20th the rest. I know I could be up front. <laughs> oh, yeah. With that kind of speed, I would definitely have all the confidence in the world. You just got to know to be able to put it there. And, I, and I've seen Allen race in the past. I know he can. But he's got two heavy hitters behind him. That would actually be Mike Rollmanger and Ed Morris. Do not count those guys out right there. And don't count the field out. I mean, I don't want to sit here and say, oh, Lord, it's Allen Jays to win. You've got a star-studded field out here tonight. And any one of these drivers, on a track especially like Indy, any one of these drivers can pull the victory off here tonight. Oh, absolutely, Joe. And you got to look at look at John T. in the back. He, he accidentally had a mistake. He come back up, and now he's back up in seventh. So, you know, he's charged to the field. You know, he might be able to give him a shot back from seventh place because there's still a lot of time left here in this race. Yes, there is. We're at lap 32 of 75 here in Indianapolis tonight for the SimSpeedShop.com Xfinity Series. Here at the Extreme Motorsports 99.com, Alan J. Elwood's about to bring an angry, hungry field behind him to the green flag here tonight. And Indy, as the pace car lights are off outside row there, Ed Morris has something to say about it if he can, but he's going to have to probably put up with Mike Rollmajor, Blake Griffin, and Chuck Sweeting right there behind him. Yeah, he's got a stacked field right behind him, so he's definitely got to make sure he gets his uh, restart good because, you know, he's done it all night. But, you know, one accident, one mess up could put him potentially behind a few cars. Here we go. Pace car out of turn four. Lights off. Going to drop off on pit road. Alan Jay's going to drop the hammer make that thing sing here at Indianapolis here at simspeedshop.com. And the speed is the name of the game here tonight. Pace cars in. Green flag flies. We're back at it here again at Indianapolis. We are back green here, Joe, and they are going to go too mm. wide, maybe. Look in the back back there. It is a parking lot. They are destroyed on the start. Nick, they just tore a lot of machines up right there. I don't know if somebody missed a shift or what. Let's watch the replay here. Looks like somebody just did not get going, and John Sterling got in the back end of them. 
John in the back looks like the 85 machine there. Judd Danielson, let's go back and watch it again. But man, on the front street, I've seen this happen several times before. Wow. Yeah, it looks like uh, maybe just Judd just didn't get going like he wanted to, and John thought he was going fast. Yeah, I've seen a lot of guys sometimes, you know, mess up, miss a gear. Looks like Judd, man, had to get on the brakes a little bit there in the back. Not quite sure, didn't get going. And then the car just didn't go, and John just right in the back. Then Michael Mueller got thrown around right there and got hooked up on the backside, but... Wow, I've seen that a couple times here at Indy. It, well, we've seen it on restarts before, actually. So, guys miss a shift. You know, maybe the car stall out. You know, the guy in front of him go. He can't quite go yet. It's a little mishap on the restart there. And you know, Joe, as we uh, as we do these caution laps, I'm almost wondering how uh, Mr. Mike Romanger is feeling about his car tonight and, and to see how he's doing in his car. Mike Rollmanger. Yeah, you know, he's sitting back there in third. He, he's, he's been pretty consistent all night. All right. Your series champ from last year. Somebody said watch from the 40. Let's see what happens here from the 40. As he just kind of had the Red Seas part in front of him there. He rode on board with him. <laughs> so, uh, Joshua Gillian. Man, a good one. And my dog agrees over here with me. <laughs> I don't know what he was yelling about, but he, he I guess he agreed on it. <laughs> you never know. He might have been watching the stream with us, Joe. <laughs> yeah, he was. He's probably watching the race going, whew, that looked like it hurt. <laughs> 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 oh, caution out here. Now, you were saying something before that. Sorry about that. You were, you were asking to do what now? I was almost wondering to see how Mike Romains was feeling inside his car, man. He's been pretty consistent all night. He's your series champion. It's, uh... If we can't bring him up here, and I'll let you get a word in with him here. Find him. He's way down here. and uh, Way down at the bottom. Yeah, he's way down here at the bottom, and he is a... Uh, I'll find him here in a minute. There he is. Well, he's all alone down here in the lines. One man wrecking crew out there tonight. Well, here he is. I'll tell you what. We'll bring him up here, and we'll let you get a word with him here. Mike Rollmanger. How's it going, Mr. Mike Romain? This is Nick up here in the booth. Oh, pretty good. How you doing? Oh, pretty good, man. We've been sitting here watching you and speaking a little bit about you. How is your car feeling, man? It looks like you're staying pretty consistent up front, not doing too bad. Uh, it's a little tired. I got into the wall a couple of times, and it's a little tight, you know. It's, other than that, it feels pretty good. Yeah, your car looks clean, man. You look consistent. Um, we just figured we'd get you up here, ask you how you're feeling, how how things are going with you, and seeing how everything's doing. Yeah, it's going good. I'm I'm trying to keep the best track position I can, so, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, Mr. Mike, we'll let you get back at it, buddy. Thanks for coming up here in the booth. I'll tell you what, there it is. The defending series champ, Mike Rollmanger. I think it's Ron, uh, Ron Manger. He he told me what I've always called him uh, Mike Romanger, and he told me that I've been saying it wrong for years, <laughs> and I probably Ron have. Meyer? And it's 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 Romanger, I think it is. But I'm gonna tell you, if I tried to start saying that, I would be all over <laughs> tongue tied. I most certainly get done time with some of the names that I've seen before. I mean, there's not too bad of names in here, but I, oh, it happens. Trust me. Well, we're in the caution here. What's that? Just like Mr. Fries, I was going to say. It's not uh, fries. <laughs> yeah, it's freeze. But I've always said fries, but it is freeze. It's spelled <laughs> fries, but he says freeze. So we'll leave it at freeze. There we go. I'll tell you, we're on a caution tonight here. Fourth one tonight here at Indianapolis for the Sim Speed Shop.com Xfinity Series here at Extreme Motorsports 99.com. 
It's been all Alan J. Elwood from the drop of the hat here, though. That man has been in control of the field and the race here as Ed Morris is out in second. Mike Rollmanger there in third. Blake Griffin up the fourth. And Chuck Sweetie there in fifth. So far, so good. As the lights are still on on the pace car. We're still in a caution here. Looks like it's going to be about lap 38 when we get back to green. And 75 here tonight. And that's what we were talking about earlier, Nick. Definitely a track like this. Uh, sometimes can be very, very good. You can have some long runs, but other times can be just kind of one of them voodoo style tracks. Can can pull some mysterious style cautions out there for some reason. Right, it's a flip flap track. Some nights you probably get really, 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 really good racing out here, and then some nights you know accidents happen. You know, this is racing, so. Absolutely, I agree with you. I mean, we've. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I have seen some disaster style stuff at Indy. It's just what it's almost like Phoenix. Phoenix is another one of them tracks where it's like, oh Lord, you know, bring out the, the BCs. That's, you know, I know the drivers You're are right. like, I'm about to have a headache. And, and it's nothing to take away from the drivers because they're, they're, they're great out there. It's just sometimes tracks, man, bring about it. And that's kind of what's happened here so far tonight. But good side is Auntie Wimish. You know, remember, he started in the back for some reason. He actually qualified well, but got caught up in the back for some reason. Not sure of the penalty or something he had to go into pit road for. But for some reason, he was well, well off the pace. Probably could have went a lap down. And that early on first caution, I believe, has saved him since the start of the race because he is up to seventh right now. And I, I feel like if this race ever gets, you know, it, it's footing going up underneath it, we get a long green flag run to it. I think John T might be one you might want to watch out for. Yeah, he's definitely put it back where he wants to have it. Maybe not just quite as good as where he wants it, but he's best, definitely in a good spot on this restart. Absolutely. Up to seventh right now. Alan J, though, lights off on the pace car. We're getting set to go back green flag racing here again. Ed Morris, though, sitting on the side here beside of him. Now, remember, Allen has been able to get massively good restarts each time, which that's the leader's advantage here. As pace cars out of turn four, going to do that hard left turn off on pit road and let the boys go back to work here at Indianapolis for the SimSpeedShop.com Xfinity Series. Here we go. Pace cars in. Allen J. Elwood brings the field to the green as we're back racing here at Indy. Let's see if these boys can get this thing uh, tightened up and single file down here in the one and two. Maybe not having uh, an accident like last time. They all got off pretty good. They got off really well as Ed Morse got out there in front. Mike Romanger got caught up a little bit with Blake Griffin. Griffin says, hey, I want a good start on this one. Mike's going to battle back to the inside. 26 of Chuck's right behind him. Mike says, not so fast. Here he comes back to the inside. Chuck's going to give him a little help down the bat stretch. Chuck's going to give him a little help as Will Davis is going to actually go to Chuck's outside. And maybe they're going to do a little two-wide battle right here. Here comes Will. He's got Will to put that thing on the outside. Falls back in line right now. The turn, Mike Romager says, not so fast. Blake, I need my third place back. He's going to try to charge and see if he can't run down Ed Morris. Smooth pass right there out of turn four. Here comes Chuck to the inside. It's another battle right there with the 26 and Will Davis as they head off into turn one. Yeah, and they better focus on what they want to do here because if they look right behind them, the captain's coming as well. He's right hot on their tail. Same thing with Mike T. Watts back there in the eighth position. Got a bad, fast ship right there tonight. He's piling in that number 56, John T. Wimbish out there. He's up to seventh. Michael Thwaites on his back tailgate. Behind him, Nick Hunt, Corbin Balk right there. With Adam Eisenhower, they thought about three wide for the moment. They're two wide here again, though, as they head off the bat stretch. Turn three this time. Nick Hunt's got the position on both of them. Yeah, that's always got to be a great feeling when you can get your nose out in front of somebody or get your rear out in front of somebody and let them follow you because now they're going to start pushing you down the front stretch. Yes, they are. Nick comes out of turn four. He's got that outside momentum there. Man behind him, Corbin's got to fall back in line, or he's going to give up a lot here. Adam Eisenhower's right on the tailgate. He goes in the inside, dives it down there. Well, that's a, day, a big, big aggressive move. We saw it earlier on, got into trouble with Darren Clements and them, but he was able to make it stick right there on the inside of Nick Hunt. This is a great battle going on for ninth and tenth. It's an absolutely great battle. Adam Eisenhower. 
Adam Eisenhower just gonna sit here and maybe watch her try to give Corbin Blake a push here. Down the chute right there, he does. He sends him a sailing into the turn, makes that pass on Nick Hunt. Nick's gonna fall on the line. Now Adam, Adam Eisenhower's gonna see what he can do with Corbin right there. But Nick now has his hands full with the 98 machine of Jerry Glenn. Jerry Glenn's all over that back deck lid right now. Yeah, they're all trying to get past Mr. Nick Hunt here. And, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe he's just a little off base. He's got his tires a little too warm, but uh, he definitely has got his hands full now. Yes, he does right there back in 11. Jerry's looking on the, on the pace, but he's actually got Jacob Bell back here. Bell's looking to try to maybe capitalize. He's up in the 14th place spot. You got the 007, KC Duncan out there. Looking good up in the 15th place spot. All these guys right now knows to tell. It was inches upon inches between each other. Yes, yeah, a good battle is going on through the field right here. You know, it's all these guys are trying to get a few extra spots here. You know, we're over halfway now, so guys are starting to think maybe I need to make a move here sooner than later. Uh, you got to start thinking about where you need to put yourself into place here and, and so forth and so on. Joshua Gillian up to 25th spot right now. Tommy Haynes called up in the wreck earlier on. He's up to 21st, but he's got his hands full with David Elliott and actually Gary May right there behind him, but he's going to work over Brendan Ketchum right there and see if he can't take over the 20th place spot. And Tommy Haynes is right there off the off uh, Mr. Ketchum's rear end. So, I mean, they're all battling, trying to get extra spots. You know, Tommy Haynes had that accident earlier in the race, and, he, you know, he's trying to crawl, black, crawl back up front to try to get a better position. Points is what it's about. you got to get out here and try to get all you can, and that's the number one name of the game for him right now is to get as many positions he can back and get as many points as he can to come out of here because the race could have been disastrous for him off the get-go, but he's up to 20th right now. He has fought hard and definitely to get back up there. He's looking to try to maybe take over Dalton Cowden and Bobby Tinch, who is sitting in the 18th and 19th place spot right now as he's closing in on those two guys for the moment. Yeah, he's closing in on him, and, you know, he's going to try to go low here and try to get around him and uh, see what he can do on that number 19, or car number 34. He made it. He, he took over the 19th place spot right there, so good pass on his end. But definitely some good racing amongst all these guys right now. Adam Eisenhower's out front right there along with him. Looks like uh, Nick Hunt's still hanging on, so everybody's kind of single file in front of him right now. Kind of getting maybe settled down. We're back about the same distance we were when, uh, you know, we had the good long green flag before. And, you know, you brought that question up. How long can they go? I said 25, 30 laps. We'll just have to see. Yeah, I'm not too sure because most guys are, I think, what we're going on lap 15 here. So, yep. Oh, contact Gary Mays trying to hang on to it. What a save, folks. <laughs> I want to tell you, let's go back on the replay. If you ever needed a wake-up pill and a wake-up call, this right here will definitely get your attention. Watch Gary Mays save this machine. And then it looks like the 42 of David Elliott cut through the grass right there. Little contact between the two. Able to save it. David Elliott through the grass. He held on to it. That could have been... A huge, huge wreck, but man, some good heads up driving by Gary May in the 10. Good heads up driving by him, and you know, you got to give it to Elliot too by not driving through that wreck because he checked up and said, Hey, I got to go low to give uh, the number 10 car some room. He did. He went the weed eater way right there, and he took the crash <laughs> down on the inside and was able to make that thing, you know, he was able to hold it, make it safely through, and that was a good pass on his end. Well, up front, Alan J. Elwood has extended his lead over Mike Romanger 1.2 seconds as of right now. And it's looking like, you know, it's his to lose. And I definitely don't want to give anything to him because he's definitely got a lot of racing left. Still got 30 laps remaining in this one tonight here at Indy. But he is closing and pulling away from the field right now with Mike Romanger. Ed Morris is the man, though. You mentioned it. We've seen it. 
It seems like as the race goes on, if it gets traction here and goes green, that man is the one to watch because he's able to pull it up to the front. Yeah, they're they're battling pretty hard here, Joe, and you know they're all single file, but uh, you know they're all trying to get the best runs off, you know, turns two and turns four to get try to get a little bit of an extra gain on on the leader, but. You know, he's pulled out to, you know, what is it, a second and a half. That's uh, it. Just about a second and a half, so. Yeah. Bad, fast, Alan J. Elwood out there. The battle's on here with Chuck Sweeney and Blake Griffith, though. Yeah, they're too wide going around four right now. And uh, I'm almost wondering how that inside lane would be better, maybe, than the outside lane. Or would the outside lane be better if you're too wide because you got more momentum? We talked about a momentum. I, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say that if you're side by side, being on the outside coming out of four is going to be the better one to be able to keep that momentum. We've seen it time and time again. The guy on the inside usually has to fall back. Now, it's if the guy on the outside has to lift because the car is pushing towards the wall is when that momentum definitely he loses all of it. But if he's able to maintain and make it all the way through the turn, I'm going to give it to the outside guy coming out because he's going to be able to push that thing. It's almost like a slingshot coming off the turn. As you see right here, John T's on the inside of Will Davis. And a perfect example, we just saw right there, Will was able to hold the car, hold it steady in line. John T's got to fall back behind him. Yeah, but he looks like he's going to try to make another move on Mr. Davis going down here one and two. Now, one and two is a different subject. If he's got the inside lane and got to go, he should be able to make that pass because he'll be able to drive that thing down in one just like that right there. John T. Wimmis takes over the sixth-place spot. Will's going to be right back on his back bumper. The problem is, is he's bringing Michael Thwaites along with him, and that's going to actually put him up underneath the 11, and you just saw him up against the wall. Mike Romanger spoke of it. The cars are tight out there, so they're going to push up just a little bit. Yeah, and just like that, a little push out to the outside wall makes you drop another position. And, you know, believe it or not, that's a lot of time on this track. Cause it's a two and a half mile track, like you said, Joe. And, you know, bumping the wall like that really slows you down. Even though it is a two and a half mile track, it's not like the plate tracks where it's pretty much wide open and strictly an oval style. Here, you've got to get in. I say this track is more about momentum than anything. Yes, the front and back stretch are a lot about speed. And, and all but you've got to get on and off of those with momentum out of the turn so those two turns with that small little short shoot straight away in them is very crucial to how you set up the front and the back stretch and how you're able to make your moves going down those parts of the track i'd have to agree joe and, and you know just like i was saying earlier um i'd almost say you don't want to mess up one and three because that will give you your momentum for four or two and four. Am I correct there? Or am I, I, would, I would say so. I mean, you know, you, you obviously you've got to make it in the door to make it out the door. And that's perfect you know, scenario that you said. If you don't make it in there and keep that car gliding on through and set yourself up right for, like you just said, turn four and turn two. Well, yeah, and we just spoke of it. Those are the turns that you want to make sure you're set up right coming down the straight uh, front stretch and back stretch. So, yeah, it is equally important to how you enter those turns to how you come off of it. It's all about that momentum. That, I, I'm going to say this is a driver's driver's, a driver's style track. And, you know, it's a driver's track, in other words, uh, not more of a um, wide open or anything like that. This is more of you've got to be know where the car is going to be and you got to kind of feel where the track is yeah and as if you're looking right here back in the eighth and ninth position Corbin uh is going to take uh mr michael Tawats here too wide here and they're going to battle for this position and you saw him go into the turn there Corbin did for the moment had the momentum but michael was able to hold coming out coming out of turn four and that's what we just spoke of so he had the momentum coming through the turn and out of the turn and was able to hold on to that position and in turn one now that puts will davis on the outside looking there to try to take that spot away from corbin they'll do battle heading off into turn two but again that inside you see the 424 machine of corbin he's going to push just a little bit out of the turn 
And there's another thing the cars want to push so bad, it's nothing he can do but to go back in the line and give that spot up at the wheel. Right, and, and, and you know, in a late race action, maybe I'm not going to lift it. I'm just going to let the car push as hard as I want out to the outside wall. But, you know, if another driver is there, that's not the best opportunity to do that. Oh, no, still too early to actually push that envelope. You definitely don't want to wreck your machine this early on. Uh, that's just something you just don't want to do. But, uh, you know, hey, 10 laps, 5 laps to go. Or Cedric said you might push it just a little bit and push that guy on the outside or inside a little more than what you normally would to hold on to that position. But up front, we got a good battle happening up here for third, fourth, and fifth. Chuck Sweeting right there has got trouble. He's got Ed Morse on his back bumper along with Blake Griffin right there. Those three machines right now, they're about to rumble here up front to try to take those positions. Yeah, Blake Griffith's going to be, uh, you know, fifth position here. He's going to try to see what the... If one of these cars can go to the in or outside, he's going to want to follow one of them cars, so that way he can get the momentum that the car in front of him has got. Absolutely it is. Blake right now is all over the back tailgate of Ed Morris on that number number seven machine. Ed's been fast later on in the runs. We're 22 laps, about 22, 23 into this stint. So how far can these guys go? We already see one or two dropping off. So I said lap 25. Oh, we got a car spinning on the inside or the front stretch of... Going into pits. Yeah, it looks like the number six car, uh, Brandon. 16 car. Brandon, catch him. Yeah. Saw him in the corner back there. He looked like he was going to go into pits. Actually, it wasn't Brandon. He actually was avoiding it. Another full black on car. Oh, KC Duncan. That's it. Yeah, you're right. Let's go back and watch what happened. Looks like he was going to go into the pits. Thought about not going into the pits, but then kind of changed his mind. Yep, looks like he was going into the pits, then said, nope, locked it down, and then the next thing you know, that thing just came around on him, and boom. Woof, Brandon had to just blow up real quick. Yeah, actually, I'm thinking maybe he accidentally finding his gears trying to downshift, because I can hear him downshift really hard, mm. go two gears, and it sounded like his gears got binded, and his rear end locked up on him, essentially, and that's what happens. Man, tore up car right now. What's up, Sandra? How you doing? And it looks like right now Joshua Gillen is back in 25th spot. Looks like uh, he's a little bit off different from the pace of, of uh, pit stops. So we'll have to see how that works out. But a couple of drivers already dropping off on pit road. I said 25 to 30. They're coming around for lap 25. You know, so I'm not 100% sure how far they can go. But right now, Alan J. Elwood He's out front, 2.2 second lead over the field of Mike Rollmanger, Chuck Sweeting, Ed Morris, Blake Griffin, the top five right now, and here they come. Lap 24 and 25, a lot of them dive off down on pit road, so I guess in between 25 and 30 laps is what we're looking at, Nick. Yeah, I'm thinking about 25, 30 laps. You'll probably hit that spot on. And, uh, you know, most guys are going to start to come down pit road. I see Nick Kuntz already made his pit stop, already back on track. So the, a long green flag run here. Had some early cautions, you know, early on in this one. As it's been a very good one so far, but it's been all Alan J. Elwood. Can he keep the fenders on that machine? Don't want to jinx him out there. Don't want to definitely put the, the curse on him <laughs> from the broadcast side of things. I've done that a many a times up here, myself and Tim, man. And the pass, I tell you, it's just one of them deals. But here he comes, 25 laps, dead on right there. He's coming down. So, uh, you know, we we talked about it. I guess right there tells us how far they can do it. Now, this tells us they can go 25 laps. But here's the thing, too. There's only 20 laps left. So you know now they can go the entire distance. They can go the entire distance distance show but my question is if we see a late race caution how much will these guys push their cars to get the win well i tell you if we see a late race caution let's let's just you know hypothetically say we're talking within 15 10 laps obviously everybody's coming down on pit road for four tires and fuel that's that's the opportunity there uh, if a Agreed. caution comes out within the next five well within, i'd say within the next five or so laps they're still going to come down because Everybody wants those tires. Tires will be definitely very, very important. 
a green white checkered you're probably not seeing anybody come down i would be surprised <laughs> if they did now i'm not going to say you wouldn't but i would be surprised if you did um because there's always going to be somebody that's going to want us to try to stay out and gamble on that one my next question would be though who would try two tires well yeah, that, that might be a good one to, to think they about could play a role yeah because obviously you we've got less than 20 to go they went 25 laps on this run if a caution was to fly and we don't want hopefully it goes green the rest of the way folks we're not out here wishing for cautions to fly okay we don't want no, to see no, 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 no. we don't want to see nobody else get in trouble or anything like that but uh you know if a caution was to fly uh let's say within the next 10 laps or so uh you know somebody could say look we're gonna go in here and maybe uh you know just do two tires and let me tell you what watch this battle back here 15 16 spot adam eisenhower john t Wimmis, and nick hunt they're back there trading paint with each other yeah they're trading paint you know and them guys they're all on brand new tires but you gotta remember now they're in lap traffic as well you know with everybody trying to rotate get their pit stops in traffic's kind of in their way so well, I tell you, Adam Eisenhower just made it probably the move of the race. Stuck it three wide, went through the middle, and just made it stick and made the pass on him. He's falling in the tire tracks of John T., who is up the 15th right now. Will Davis is right there in front of him. But like you just said, all those guys are sitting on four tires and fuel as we're getting close here to 15 to go tonight. Indianapolis style, Extreme Motorsports 99.com, SimSpeedShop.com's Xfinity Series. Oh, what a save by Will Davis. That was an amazing save by Will Davis. Go back on a replay and see that Nick, man. Wow. Yeah, that was, whoo. That got me jumping. Uh, let's see what happened. Like a little contact between him and, yeah, a little contact between him and. Maybe John T. right there and Adam Eisenhower, heads up move, went through the grass to avoid it. Could have been more disastrous, but boy, I tell you what a driving job by the 11. And so, they, you know, the captain's on the move. He knows his time is running out. He's back in 13th. He does not have all day, so he is trying to make it to the front the best way he can. Right, and you know, I almost want to say it's not the worst move to do. It wasn't really as bad of a move. It just, it's a race and incident. He's Will was trying to block, and John said, no, I'm not letting you block me today. Hey, it's getting down to the closing laps here. I tell you, these guys been a go. I always say a business is about to pick up. Run what you brung here tonight at Indy. You can start to feel, man, the heat and the rise off the track, off the cars, and off the heads of some of these drivers. Tonight, John T. is trying to muscle his way to the front. He's up the 12th so far. He's made the pass over Jerry Glenn. So he's got a fast machine. Jacob Bell has yet to make a pit stop. He's been out there for 31 laps so far. Tommy Haynes at 23 laps. Gary May. Now, they're not going to be able to go all the way. What they're hoping for is a caution. Yeah, if they're actually grinning right now if they got a caution because what would happen is everybody would probably come down pit road, I would say, Joe, hypothetically, and, you know, that's going to put them up front. Well, you, you could really couldn't afford to not come down. Even if you're Allen Jail, would only been out there four laps, and those guys in front of you, you know they're coming down on pit road because then you're going to be on four, five, six lap older tires than what they will, and it puts you at a disadvantage if a caution was to fly here very soon. So that's what they're waiting on, but it seems like Jacob Bell's coming down on pit road. Tommy Haynes probably going to fall. So Dwight, how you doing out there? Man, so far it's been exciting. It's going to cycle around, though, if everybody does make their pit stops to Alan J. Elwood, who is right now in front of Chuck Sweeting and is walking away from Chuck. Alan's probably sitting right there going, please, you know, I've, I've been in this position many a times to try to close the deal. Can he close the deal tonight? Can he actually put in victory lane? He said earlier, look, his first race, he had a good finish. His other three or so, not so much, 20th place. But if you look at his performance on those tracks, just like tonight, dominating. It's just been mishap, so definitely not over with. But right now, he's looking very good. 
Yeah, he's looking strong, and you know, just like you said, Joe, we're halfway through the season. There's still a lot of season left. For him to make a turnaround and say, hey, I want myself to be up on that top leaderboard when this thing ends championship time. Yes, he does, and with 20 of place positions, has put himself in a bad, bad hole. But back here, Blake Griffin and company, they're still mixing it up a little bit. John T's trying to run to the front. He's up to ninth right now. He's a man on a mission. Now, he probably would say he would benefit from a caution here because that would close the field up for him. Some guys like him might be saying, Man, yeah, a caution would be nice, but he's going to work over the back end of Michael Thwaites right here for the moment. Yeah, he's going to try to go to the inside, and I think Blake Griffith's going to actually try to come down to the inside maybe and follow him to get you know that extra position out of it. Looks like Michael got up into the wall just a little bit, so it's going to give the momentum right there along with uh, old John T. So now the next stop would be, and they run down to Ed Morris and try to get him. As you see now, pit stops for the top guys. Tommy Haynes on pit road along with others. That actually relinquishes the lead back to Alan J. Elwood, who has a 2.2 second lead over Chuck Sweeting. Chuck's another guy tonight. I know he's probably out there grinning going, hey, I don't win. I'm at least going to come out here with a good finish because, you know what? He started 29th. Yeah, and I don't know if that's the hard charger tonight, but in my books, that's a hard charger right there. 29th to second position. That's a lot of cars. That's almost the whole field, Joe. That's pretty much, yeah, he would be the definitely the hard charging man tonight if he can hang on. But the problem is he's got a bad fast number nine Napa know-how machine behind him of Mike Romanger, Mr. Extreme himself, who definitely, well, he drives that sponsor. I mean, and definitely, man, stands behind it because he knows how to get around the track, knows how to win championships. And right now he's all over the back end of Chuck Sweeting to try to take second place spot. Just like you heard from Joe earlier, they call him the original Mr. Extreme. So he's definitely going to see what he can try to do here on Mr. Chuck Sweeney. So far, he's right there trying to size him up. He understands. Don't want to take the move. The problem is every the more he stays behind Chuck, the more that means Alan J. Elwood is long gone. And then in the back of the mind, Mike might say, you know what, even if I get around Chuck, I might not have enough to run down Alan unless he makes a mistake. Right now, Chuck's going to fight for everything he's worth to try to hang on to that second place spot, though. Yeah, you know, Joe, they've got a, quite a bit of ways behind them before Ed Morris is right behind them. So, you know, they can battle it out a little bit here and not really have to worry about Ed catching them too quick unless, you know, accident happens. And that's the thing. Don't want to mess up, and I think that's what Mike is doing. He, he is, like I've said, he's a calculated-style driver. He'll sit back there. He'll he'll size up what Chuck's doing, maybe ride on his back bumper. Hopefully he'll make a mistake, do a little bit of mirror driving there. As he looks to the inside, here he goes. He's going to try to take the pass for second, and he makes it clean. So does he have enough time? Does he have enough car to run down Alan J. Elwood up front, who has got the lead so far and has had dominated pretty much this entire race. Uh, Nick, he's led 56 of the 65 laps here tonight so far. Put it on pole, and he's out front so far. Yeah, he's looking strong. If you watched him the first few weeks, he was a really strong top of the line, fast car up front. Just little mistakes here and there. And, and, you know, he's really showing that he is dominant out here. Yes, he is. Right now, Ed Moore still hanging on to the fourth place. Blake Griffith there in fifth. John T to sixth. Michael Thwaites to seventh. Will Davis up to eighth. Adam Eisenhower ninth. Mike Franklin. There's another one we talked to earlier. Remember, he got caught up in the wreck earlier on. Guess what? He's up to tenth right now. And he's going to try to see if he can't run down and maybe get that uh, ninth place spot. He's got Jerry Glenn right there behind him, though. Yeah, Jerry Glenn, he's uh, he's right there behind him. He's been running around 13, 14, 15, just about all night as well. So, you know, these guys are real consistent, um, trying to run hard and trying to get a few extra spots if you can. Points are everything here. Definitely they, they maximize as the season goes on. So, so far, so good. Jerry looked there for the moment on the inside. Couldn't get the pass done on Mike Franklin. He'll fall back in the line. Nick Hunt is right there, too. 
And you've got about two, about two or three machines all right there, single file, nose to tail. Yeah, and, and you know, as laps are winding down here, we're on lap uh, 67, going to be coming to lap 68 here. These guys are thinking, man, we need a caution as soon as we can get one, try to tighten this field back up to get a few extra spots. As you know, green white checkered. I mean, it, it's in. You know, I used to say, well, five, five or less to go. Caution comes out an I race, and we're done. Not so much anymore. Now we got green white checkers. As long as the white flag doesn't fly, hey, we can restart them. Yeah, so restart them and we'll restack them again. Which it puts me in the spot of maybe Allen won't come in if if that did happen because they can run at least thirty laps because. Uh, I forgot what cart was, but they ran 30 laps. At that, at that moment, Nick, the question would be, would you want to be the leader? Because everybody's going to do what the leader does. And right. maybe unless you're back in 10th or, or further back, maybe 15th or so, and sure, they'll come in the pits, maybe would help you. But if you're sitting second, third, fourth, fifth, you don't want to give up that position. So you're, you're sitting going, all right, does the leader go in? And if he does, do I stay out? You know, that, whew, that, that that's a tough one on the leader right there. Yeah, it is, because if he, you know, if he stays out and everybody else goes in, he's on old tires now. He kind of yes. made a mistake. Sitting but, duck, and we've seen that before. Is sitting duck is right, you know, if, but if, then again, he's the magic man. If he stays out and everybody stays out with him, and he walks away with the win because he knows what he's doing. Yeah, it, it, um, I tell you, it was a coin toss, and that's a gamble. Uh, and that's that's just that's just something crazy right there. Definitely going to be interesting to see as Alan Jailwood is still in control. He would much rather see this thing go straight out. Green flag as when they go across the line, there will be five to go here at Indianapolis tonight for the SimSpeedShop.com's Xfinity Series here live at ExtremeMotorsports99.com. Right now, good one. I'm watching back here with Nick Hunt and them. As, uh, they're having a pretty good battle. Yeah, they're having a, a great battle. You know, Justin Gain here, he uh, passed Mr. Glenn on the inside here. As Nick Hunt was going to try to pass him on the inside, but looks like the outside just got the momentum coming out of fourth. Yes, it does. Nick's back there in 13th, and we'll see what he's going to do going into turn one. Is Jerry going to be able to hold that? Yep. There, he's able to hold on to as they come out of the turn. So far, man, a good battle between them. They still side by side. Yeah, going down the back stretch, it looks like Nick Hunt's actually got a little bit of advantage, but on the front side, he didn't have an advantage. So let's see who can really work this out here and see who can get the position out of it. Oh, yeah, no doubt right there. Nick is still battling on the inside along with Jerry. Giving plenty of room so far. But we're going to have five to go here at Indy. Been all Alan J. Elwood for most of the race. Can he keep it together, keep the fenders on it, and finally put it in victory lane here and cap off what has been kind of a roller coaster start to a season for him? You know, I almost think that's what he needs. He needs to come out here, get one of these dominating wins like he would be doing right now. And, you know, that, that would give him a jump start on this, not a jump start on the season, but a jump start to get his season going in a right direction because he did have the few mishaps in the earlier races. You're right. I mean, definitely a win is, is something that you, you know, would kickstart your season in the gear for you. And not to say, man, his season's been bad. His finishes of what had definitely hurt him. Performance-wise, he has definitely been on par of one of the fastest. And right now, though, Mike Romanger is definitely a lot quicker. The problem is Mike is running out of time. He's 2.5 seconds back, and right that time, though, they kind of split the difference between them. So one lap looks like Allen's fast, the next lap Mike's fast. So maybe Allen's looking in that relative going, going, okay, I don't have to push the car as hard. That's the other thing we don't talk too much about. Other guys can look and say, okay, I've got 2.5 seconds. You know, I could give up five tenths and not push the car. As long as I maintain that distance, you know, maybe give up five tenths, take back a tenth the next time. You're giving and taking. You're not running the car on the ground and making a lot of mistakes. Yeah, and, and you know, just like that, 
tire temp actually does play a role into how well these cars get off the corners because if, it's, if they get too hot, they get real slick. And, you know, if you back off the throttle a little bit and don't push the car as hard, your tire temps would cool down to try to help you get better drive off. So if Mike was pushing his car too hard and Alan said, hey, I backed off enough, now I need to get back on it, he could possibly gain a few more tents back just by doing that. Yes, he could. Bill Davis got up into the wall just a little bit back there in eighth place spot, let Michael Thwaites get around him there. So cars are starting to push a little bit as they're about 18, 19 laps into this run. we got three to go here to conclude Indy tonight for the SimSpeedShop.com Xfinity Series. Been an exciting race from the start to the end. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. Very good one here is this race. Alan J. O. Woods been in control. Watching back here, Will Davis doing company along with Adam Eisenhower, Michael Thwaites. So, uh, wow, so far. Got a lot, a lot of good action throughout the whole entire field so far tonight. A lot of good action. You know, we've seen mistakes here and there, which it's racing, it happens. We've seen a lot of uh, uh, momentum swings, I would so to speak, because, you know, uh, you know, Darren accidentally had a momentum swing early in the race. He didn't really get his uh, start like he wanted, but, you know, he was trying to push back up, and it looks like he's fell back again, so he's kind of had a momentum swing there. Yes, it is. Battle right now for ninth and 10th. Mike Franklin got caught up in a wreck earlier on in the race, but he is all over the back tailgate of Adam Eisenhower, who is trying to hang on to that machine. And Mike's not easing up. Problem is, Jerry Glenn's right there behind him all through. Jerry Gaines, no, Justin Gaines, excuse me, is right behind him. And here comes Justin. Whew, at what point does Mike push the issue here to try to get around Adam? I'm not too sure if I would try to hold off and try to get the momentum and get back inside of him or push real hard to stay outside to get the momentum off the exit of the run as uh, looks like Adam Eisenhower just bumped the wall a little bit. They did. These two, these three guys back here, man, are clamoring around. Mike Franklin goes around Adam. He hit the wall. Justin Gain got up to ninth. Mike's right there. White flags out one more time for the man out front, Alan J. Elwood. But a battle's on back here for 10th and all as Alan J. Elwood's going to storm out of the turn and turn three for the final time. All he pretty much has to do is put it in cruise control at this moment as he heads for turn four. He'll head off down the strong, strong front stretch here. Out of turn four, Alan J. Elwood is going to win it tonight here. What a good finish for him. And you'll see Mike Rollmanger, Chuck Sweeting there in third. I doubt to say, does Mike Franklin, is he going to be able to hang on to 10th? Let's go back and watch. Out of turn four, he's going to hang on to 10th right there. Good comeback victory on his end. But what a win. What a way to bounce back here tonight for Alan J. Elwood. It, it was a very dominating performance by him. I think he really needed that to put him back up and, and get his season started right now he, he needs to realize that hey i've got to make a move or else i'm not going to have a shot at a uh, championship this year absolutely and, and that's the whole whole thing right there you just said it is uh oh you know, he, he he needed that and that also gets your mental psyche going too i mean so right there alan J. Elwood put it in victory lane chucks or mike Rollmanger coming up into second he was able to have a very, very good points night. And Chuck Sweeting, wow, what a run for him here tonight also. Going to get a word in with these guys here. Man, what a race. That was a good one. Chuck Sweeting there. Good. I'm going to tell, tell you what there, Nick. Check this out. Chuck Sweeting coming up in third tonight. Doesn't have a team. So, uh, good free agent out there for anybody that's looking. Yeah, if you're watching this and you want to see a man go through the field in a hard charge tonight at a track like this, Chuck Sweeting is your man. He, he started 29th, and he ended up third. I mean, that's a great, great finish for him. Yes, it is. Well, let's bring up Chuck here and let's get a word with him. Chuck Sweeting, this is uh, Nick up here in the booth. How's it going? Hey, Nick. How you doing? Oh, pretty good, man. We've seen a dominating performance uh, by Alan J. Edward tonight, but got to say give it to you you started 29th and you finished third how does it feel to go through the field like that and to put this thing up front and on the podium and say hey i'm up here and i'm fast uh it feels pretty good i, I kind of surprised myself i was a little bit faster than uh than 
I was expecting. And uh, but I didn't have anything for Alan or, or Mike either. I needed uh, I needed to go full fuel runs, and then maybe I could have could have hung with them, but uh, didn't work out that way. But it was a blast. It was a great race. Everybody did a great job. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and you know, it looks like you had a really, really dominating car as well tonight. It looks like you were really quick, uh, especially on the long runs and your strategy looked very good. How did you all make that play into a factor to put you up here on the podium? Uh, I just back up my entry to the corners a lot more than most guys. Uh, I kind of made a mistake there at the end. I, I, I put some front brake in it for that green flag pit stop. And then I forgot to take it out when I came back out on the track and until about five laps ago, and then I remember it was a little too late then. So I don't know. I don't know what would have happened. Maybe I could have been a little bit faster. But, uh, you know, the main thing is just trying to save the right front tire. These things are pretty tight. And uh, if you kill that right front tire, especially early in the run, then uh, you're just going to fall back. So got to be patient with it. Well, Chuck, you had a great run tonight, man. 29th to 3rd, you're the hard charger tonight. Um, you know, looks like you're a free agent, but, man, who gets it all done for you? Who helps you here? Because that was a dominating performance for you to go through the field like that. Hey, it's just me. Just me, uh, my own little team, Mystery Motorsports. And uh, I just, just like racing. So I've uh, been watching this league for quite a while now on, uh, on your broadcast and uh, in the past. And... Uh, wanted to get in on it, and uh, I'm real glad that I did. So I want to thank everybody, uh, all the league admins and owners, uh, for all the work they do. They really make this a nice place. Well, you guys heard it from Mr. Chuck Sweeney, 29th to 3rd. What a hard charger award he's got here. Uh, thanks, Chuck, for coming by, and uh, great race tonight, buddy. All right, thank you. There you go. You have a third-place man, Chuck Sweeney, right there. Did what he needed to do with this guy. Calling Mr. Extreme, Mike Rollmajor, pulling it out in second place. Bring him up. Let's get a word with him. Mike Rollmajor, this is Nick up in the booth. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing just fine, man. You had a great car tonight. You look like you were pretty dominant. Um, it almost looks like you you had the times to to beat Alan uh, uh, JL World up front. Um. Explain to us how your car was feeling there at the end, because it looks like you had a fast car, and it looks like you're putting down faster laps here and there. Yeah, it, it just gets so aero pushy, you know. It, when you get in the dirty air, it just, you know, you don't have the downforce on the front end. You can't turn in like you wouldn't need to. I think, Alan, if I could have ever got out in front of him for a lap or two, I could probably could have held my own and, you know, and, and got him, but... You know, he had track position the whole night, and he kept it, and, and you know, Alan, Jill, it, Alan Elwood, he's he's hell of a competitor, so, you know, I tried my best. Well, you, you tried your best, buddy, but you did get a second place finish. I mean, you're the ex-champion uh, here from last season. Um, you know, how well does that put you in for, you know, late race uh late championship starts here because you know you, you're second here in the uh, on the race how well did you do with the points this season i'm not sure where i'm at in the points uh i think i'm in the top 10 i think but yeah i think uh i think i think i got something for them down towards the end of the year i just need to you know get consistent top five finishes the rest of the season and and, and when the chase starts just you know, get them top two or three. Well, Mr. Mike Romanger, how do you say your last name? But I think we're saying it a little wrong here. Is it Romanger? Yeah, it's Rominger. Rominger. Okay, <laughs> me and Joe were asking that earlier. Well, it looks like you're pretty consistent. You're normally pretty consistent throughout the season. Uh, thanks for stopping by up here. And uh, who gets it all done for you, buddy? Uh, the nap on the, on the front. And, I, I, man, I like to thank everybody that puts on the show every week. Rick for putting up the the uh, series and, and you guys for broadcasting and all our, our sponsors that came on board and all that. I, <laughs> this league has went from, you know, four years ago, five years ago, from, 
you know, just get started, and it's one of the top leagues in, in I racing, I, I believe. So, uh, thank you guys for all you do for it. Well, Mr. Muck, we appreciate you too. Thanks for putting on a dominating performance tonight, trying to get the best run you could. Uh, thank you. Yep. Call it Mr. Extreme right there, Mike Rollmajor, and uh, he has definitely, he lives up to the name, no doubt about it. Well, this guy, man, put it in victory lane here tonight. Alan J. Elwood, join the booth, guy, got me. I got you, Joe. <laughs> Finally, that's what you could say. You put this thing together, the whole package, and won it here tonight in dominating fashion. What a way to make your season turn around, and uh, wow. I, I mean, how's it feel to win here at Indy? Uh, right now, it's it, it feels awesome. I haven't won in I don't even know how long. Uh, it's it, it doesn't really hit you when you first do it, so it's going to take a little bit to sink in, but I'm just I'm happy the monkey's off my back. Uh, we got that win going into the chase now, so... You know, all bets are off. We're we're going for it. I don't blame you right there. Like you just said, all bets are off. You've got a fast machine. You've shown it week in and week out. Obviously, a few hiccups here and there, but you put those behind you tonight. Put it on pole. Dominated 67 laps. Led tonight. Put it in victory lane. Man, you got who you want to thank for this one here. Oh, uh, sponsors, Performance Powder Coating, Ricardo Kart, uh, Elwood Designs, all the guys at CCR uh, stuck behind me, Gary, Blake, Will, Judd, you know, every single week, uh, regardless good or bad, uh, it, they're always there with encouraging words, and and uh, so, you know, hats off to those guys, and Extreme here, you guys here in the booth, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, it's an awesome feeling. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I, I have, you know, probably no words there. You definitely may come out here and show them why you're a top-tier driver here in the series and put it in a victory lane. But I tell you what, again, congratulations there, Alan, for the winner here tonight in Indy. Thank you, guys. All right, right there you go. Alan J. Elwood putting it in victory lane. And as always, let's get the unofficial results order here tonight because Alan J. Elwood dominated and put it in victory lane. Mike Romanger there in second. Chuck Sweeting, the free agent man to be right there up in the third. Ed Morse, he pulled off a fourth. Jake Griffin, Blake Griffin up the fifth. John T. Wimish was able to battle back and get up the sixth. Will Davis the seventh. Michael the weights to eighth. Justin Gain tonight. Mike Franklin, after mishap early, able to come out of the top ten here tonight. Look to the rest of the field. Nick, it was a good one. It started off a little itchy, but I tell you, it ended up being an awesome race here at Indy. Yeah, this was a great race. You know, this really set kind of the standards of who can run up front, who can do what, you know, how well you can put your car back up front and, you know, how things play out on the track. Because this, this was a tough track, I believe, tonight, Joe. It was. I mean, Indy is always a tough place to come to year after year and season after season here but that man alan j elwood conquered this place came out put it on pole and just dominated from the green flag to the checkered and won it here tonight well for myself joe white nick up here in the booth and everybody at extreme for the simspeedshop.com here xfinity series and osr network everyone have a good night